morning. Right, let's talk camouflage. Iffy subject for some. Love it, hate it. Personal preference. I don't care either way, to be honest. And I suppose you've got to break it into two categories, military and civilian use. Well, I'm going to talk about civilian use. And again, you could break that down into people that want camouflage for hunting. So they want to get, you know, closer to their prey, their quarry, which, yeah, totally understand that, totally get it. Uh, wild camping. If you're wild camping in a location where you shouldn't really be, I can understand you wanting to blend in. I do it myself. And then of course there's people that just buy it because it's cool. That is the most divisive one. Uh, I know I've got a few ex-military guys absolutely hate camouflage now. Uh, I would never wear it again. And um, a lot of people really like it. I like a lot of the um, ex-military, you know, surplus type gear myself because generally it's hard wearing, it's comfortable and it's not expensive and if you're out, you know, roughing it in the woods you don't want to be out there with a two, three hundred pound posh jacket and completely wreck it. So I can understand using the surplus gear, that is my reasoning for, for using it most of the time. Now I've brought, brought my bag out with some examples of what I've got and I'll go through them and my pros and cons in my mind anyway. This is very much a personal opinion and also it's very much relevant to where I am here on the south coast and the type of woodland that I'm in. This obviously wouldn't work in you know mountainous areas and moorland and that sort of thing because uh, it's a whole different terrain and then when you go further afield into you know different countries abroad their woodlands are completely different color palette so there is variations but uh, this is more about southern part of England shall we say for me personally and what I find works. I'll get them out and I'll show you. Right, let's start with everybody's friend and favourite for this part of the world anyway. The British Army DPM. This is uh, early 90s this one. It's a great jacket. Um, I like it because it's hard wearing, it's comfortable, it's not heavy, multiple pockets, carry loads of rubbish if I don't want to take a bag with me. Um, it's a good all round. The camouflage works well. Um, I think in its time it was probably one of the best camouflages out there. In my mind it's a little bit on the green side for winter time, but spring, summer, autumn, it's always a good shout. I quite like that, I wear it a lot. Now, the next one, oof, the German flat tire. This is my winter jacket, because it's a waterproof one. same more or less basic colour pattern. Uh, Parrot I should say not pattern, different pattern, same colours. I really like the German flak tarn. I think it's an excellent camo and blends in brilliantly. Between the two 
I think it's it, it's pretty close to call over which one's more effective. Flat time may just edge it for me personally, um, but both both are great. Winter time when everything's brown. There's nothing wrong with just having a flat beige brown one piece colour. It is a disruptive pattern, the others, and that is relevant if you're getting very up close. If you're 50 feet or further away and you're wearing something like this, you're still going to blend in. You really are, trust me. Um, the art of camouflage, I personally think, is just as much about field craft, using the terrain, shadows, movement, etc., as it is the actual colours or patterns that you're wearing. Winter time, fine. This one. I use this in the winter. Um, if it's a, a dry, sunny day, like today, but chilly, just a plain green fleece, black arms, black shoulders, breaks the colour up, breaks the shape up a little bit. Again, at range, 50 foot plus, it's still going to work. There's no need to look like a, like a soldier, shall we say. This will work just as effectively at range, especially if you're keeping still. And don't even know whether I should uncover the last one. Very controversial. Probably one of the worst camos that ever came out. The American digital um, ACU, is it ACU? I think it is. But the American digital pattern in this grey, which they thought was going to be a multi-cam of, of its time. They've obviously binned it now, so you can pick lots of this up very cheap. And I have seen it dyed green, and then it's quite effective. But in these colours, no, not really. But I will say, I have tested this in the woodland. I've set it up uh, and walked away from it. And at distance, it actually is okay. <laughs> I really don't like the look of it, but it's actually not that bad. Um, definitely not my first choice. Um, it is a poncho. So it is literally a case of, I'll put that on if the weather's horrendous uh, and keeping dry is the most important factor. Apart from that, I wouldn't, wouldn't use this. But as I say, I've seen it dyed green. Um, yeah, it's okay. the pattern's okay. It's just this color's wrong. Maybe in a sort of more arid environment or maybe even urban environment, Yes, but out here, it's, it's not ideal. What I think I'll do is possibly put these out in the woodland here and, and film them to give you some idea of how they perform at the different ranges, including this one, just for a giggle. Let's do that. Right, what I'm going to do, that broken tree behind me, I'm going to hang each one on there and take a photo from a distance of what, 15 feet, just to uh, compare them. Uh, I'll do one 
full range shot and one zoom so you can see how it differs at range just the short range and let's face it this is the worst possible scenario you're standing out in the open no cover full sun after that i may put them in cover and we can see the difference Right, here we are at about four, 75 feet, shall we say. Let's have a zoom. I'll go, oh, sorry, wobble, it's a long zoom. I've given the ACU every opportunity a because it's funny colours, B because it's waterproof, it's slightly shiny and it's in the sun so I've got him behind the trees there. Then the DPM, flat the plain green olive with the black shoulders, although you can't see the shoulders, and that's the plain, oh it's not focusing, that's the tan. Sorry about the wobble there. So, yeah, at this sort of range, any of them, they will all work. So, that's my personal views on camouflage. It's a good tool to have at short range. At longer ranges in dense woodland, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. I like it. I do like the camo. Um, yeah, it's tough. Not everybody does. But it's not necessary. As you can probably see today, I've got my plain green Italian army top, just green trousers. I'll blend in with the background okay, apart from the exposed bits, obviously. Um, yeah, you don't have to go camo. If you want to, go for it. I will say, I don't think there's any need to have the full outfit. You see people going out with, you know, full DPM jacket, trousers, the matching hat and everything else. If that's your thing, fine. If you're hunting, paintballing maybe, something like that, I can see the advantage. But for general sort of use, it's not really necessary. Um, I mean, you've only got to look around in nature. There's very few things that are one uniform color or pattern. It's very varied. So there's no harm in having a camouflage jacket, plain green or brown trousers, or camouflage trousers, or and a plain green or brown jacket to mix it up. Things are mixed up in nature. And we could learn a lot from that. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.